Not How It Ends, by Abrasas Reed. Chapter 1. Lexi. October 3rd. Sunlight. The ginger shielded her eyes as she tried to look directly at her friend on the bus ride to school, who was unfortunately sitting on the side of the bus the sun was pouring in from. The bright light was a strange occurrence for an October morning, especially in Vianoka, where they were so used to constant rain. The other girl's lips were pursed, a stern, almost motherly look on her conventionally pretty features. The first girl shook her head to clear the thoughts of kissing her. She wasn't trying to avoid feeling emotions. She liked women and she knew that. But those kinds of thoughts towards her best friend? She replaced her almost disgust expression with a smile, almost a smirk. Something wrong, Kate? Her friend, an elf named Caitlin Bellwood, only glared at the ginger, one eye peeking out from side-parted brown hair. Part of Lexi wanted to jokingly call her friend Emo, but she resisted the urge. She was already mad at her. She moved herself a little closer to Caitlin, pressing her shoulder against the other girl slightly. Come on, this isn't about me ignoring your text, is it? She knew full well that it was, and Caitlin had good reason to be mad. For the ginger, Lexi hexed, the day was extremely dangerous. For Lexi, her 17th birthday was the beginning of her certainly young end. For Lexi, a half-blood, she was practically already dead. Caitlin's tanned skin almost got red. Lexi could see the other girl's jaw clench. Of course it's about that, you... <sighs> Lexi knew Caitlin couldn't see it, but her brown eyes had gained a slight white glow as she seethed, going on and on about exactly what it was Lexi had done wrong, her language switching between common, Vianokin, and Spanish. The other girl felt something warm start flowing down her face. Shit! Caitlin! She wouldn't die. That couldn't kill her. It was just a nosebleed. But it was still scary watching your blood start pouring from your nose. In her panic and fear, and upon seeing the blood in her hand as she used to try to stop the blood flow, she felt her mind blank. Her actions didn't feel right, and her words didn't feel like her own when she slapped her friend across the face. You're scaring me. There was fear in Caitlin's eyes. They grew wide, losing their glow. Everyone on the bus had turned to look at them. The whisper started. She's already crazy. I'm asking my mom to move me off this bus. Why haven't the hunters killed her yet? Lexi's face felt hot. Lexi's face felt hot. She still felt far away, watching from a distance her own actions. She started crying. Caitlin's eyebrows furrowed, her hand raising towards her friend's shoulder, hovering just above her body as if she was unsure if she should comfort her friend. Lexi wasn't sure herself if she wanted her to. She wouldn't be able to tell her if she did. Is, is she okay? A tiny voice from the seat behind them, a small-looking boy with blue and black split hair. He had peeked his head from the seat and was staring almost directly into Lexi's face. Are you a middle schooler? was all Caitlin could think of as a response. He was small, maybe 5'3 and thin. He had an incredibly childish young face. He frowned. No, I'm a junior. Lexi's thoughts finally cleared up. She wiped her eyes and looked at the boy who was mere inches from her. She poked his head to push him back a little, wondering herself how a child got into the school bus for high school. No, you're not. Lexi sniffled a little, wiping her eyes again, almost laughing at the boy. He looked her up and down with a tiny, smirk-like smile. Such a small expression. Such a small look. But she blinked for a second, one name flashing in her mind. Alex. As quickly as the thought came, it left. Alex would be 19 by now. Alex was dead. Alex didn't have blue hair. Alex was taller. Alex was dead. She shook her head. He looked almost giddy and too childish to have a connection to her brother. Besides, it's not like he could be his son or anything like that. Alex was only two years older than her. Whoa. Alexa Hext? The use of her full name startled her. It took her a minute to reply, the thought of him just knowing who she was making her uneasy. Uh, yeah? He seemed to perk up, brown eyes shining. I've heard people talk about you. You're, um, a half-blood, right? Lexi nodded, giving Caitlin a help-me look. The kid was unnerving. He was so excited. That's so cool! I've done a lot of research into half-bloods. What do you think about anti-half-blood association? Can you do anything cool? She almost wanted to hit him. 
He was annoying, short, and looked like a kid. Disgusting. His speech was quick. He was filled with so much energy that it annoyed her. But at the same time, part of her wanted to give him a chance. No, was all she said. No to what? He wouldn't know. She didn't even know. She was tired. She just slapped her best friend and she was going to die soon. Maybe that last thought was an exaggeration to some, but for Lexi, it was the truth. Turning 17 for a half-blood meant that you start to go crazy. Your human half being unable to support the existence of your non-human half. Of course the government couldn't have that, so the anti-half-blood organization could legally kill her if she did do anything wrong. It was Lexi's 17th birthday. She was going to die soon. She stopped paying attention to the kid and turned her attention back to her best friend. The one she just slapped. The one with a handprint across her face. I'm sorry, if that means anything, Kate. Caitlin nodded, then shrugged. The younger kid wasn't important anymore. You were in a bad mood when you got on. Argument with your mom? Lexi chuckled, resting her head against the bus seat. Kinda. There was an extra hint of bitterness in her voice. Caitlin gave her a look, almost like she was expecting her to say more, and sighed. Dad called this morning. He said that he wanted to say happy birthday, and that he was close to finding a cure to the whole half-blood thing. It's like he thinks I'm a disease, Caitlin. She spat the word disease. She saw a flicker of something in Caitlin's eyes. Maybe he just means a 17-year-old curse thing. You know, having two half-blood kids who share your DNA but still have DNA of the other creatures when you and your wife are human is jarring. And he lost Alex, and, you know, she cut off, wiping the tear from her face. Lexi couldn't help the annoyance that hit at her friend defending her father. He didn't care about Alex. Lexi's words were flat, to the point. Why beat around the bush? Or me. He's literally the mutt that made us like this. Why would he want to stay around his mistakes? He's just a piece of shit dad who spends more time conveniently in a place his fucked up bastard of a kid lives than with his wife and kids. She gave a bitter laugh. He didn't even have the balls to stay in the same country as her. He was off in some island outside of Vinicaw. Oh. Caitlin looked down, her eyebrows furrowed. I'm sorry, Lex. I forgot. She doubted that was true. When the bus finally stopped, Lexi managed to get off the bus without any further hassle from classmates, which shouldn't have surprised her, but it did. She waded off to the side of the bus as she got off for Caitlin. Not even seconds later, she felt a looming presence behind her. She turned. Shit, it's you, kid, the boy from earlier, who was only about an inch shorter than Lexi, who stood about 5'3", was staring at her with expectant eyes. What? He grinned and held out his schedule. I'm new here. Can you help me read this? She snatched the paper from his hands, skimming it over. The entire thing was in a viocan. She groaned. Are you illiterate or something? Almost every non-human knew Vionokan. It was their own language. Non-humans were the one group who kept Vionoka's old language when Vionoka became more open to outsiders. And there was no way that that thing was human. No, I just... Uh, never really saw the point to learn Vianokan. Why does the school think that the warlock next to my name also means speaks another language? For all they know, I could be from somewhere outside of Vianoka. He reminded her so much of her brother. He had thought the same way. He rambled too much to remind her much of him, though. Ugh, fine, I'll translate for you. Do you have a pen? She pulled one of her books from her bag as a hard surface to write on. He handed her a pen from his bag, leaning over the paper to watch her write, his moppy hair drooping onto the page. Dude, I can't do anything if you don't move. Lexi glanced over the paper, her face turning pale when she read the first class. Fuck. He was in her first period. Handing him back the paper once she finished translating everything, she turned around to Caitlin, who by now was standing near the bus, a small smile on her face. Her hair had moved a little. More of a long scar that went from her left corner of her mouth to the other corner of her right eye was showing. Usually, her face was so covered by her hair that even her nose was covered. Lexi made the decision not to say anything. Why would she? Hey, sorry. That kid. I'm 17. Lexi jumped, looking back at the nuisance that had stayed with her instead of leaving. I thought I said that. She glared at him. Dude, take a... Oh, right. Sorry. Caitlin flashed him a wide smile, her eyes crinkling up at the corners. Lexi flashed her a look. 
What was she up to? What's your name, anyways? His brown eyes widened. He smiled. Great. Now they weren't going to be able to get rid of him. Like a raccoon you gave garbage to. Karsh. Karsh Allens. Something about how he said it almost had Alexi hold her hand out to him to shake. She didn't. That would be embarrassing. Caitlin kept that wide smile on her face. She always had that stupid, pretentious smile. She knew that she was pretty. It was annoying. Even with the scar on her face, she was pretty. Even if she'd gotten her entire face brutally mauled by a bear, she'd probably still be pretty. Nice to meet you. You already know this bitter little thing is Lexi, and I'm Caitlin. Karsh nodded, clasping his hands behind his back, rocking back on his heels. Lexi wasn't convinced he was 17 still. He had to be at most 12. So, when do classes start? 20 minutes from now. The buses get here early so that kids can have breakfast. He nodded again. Lexi began to wonder if he was just one of those bobblehead things, or if his head was just not on right, or if maybe he had a balancing issue. Caitlin adjusted her book bag, glancing over to another group of kids her age standing near the front of school. Well, my other friends are here, so I'm going to go over there. Lex, you joining today? Caitlin knew full well that her friends were all extremely against half-bloods and consistently made rude remarks towards Lexi when she joined them. But she would always ask anyways, because she needed to feel as guilty about leaving Lexi all alone, she assumed, because she needed an excuse for leaving her friend all alone. No, I'll pass. I'll hang around with the kid. She found herself smiling a bit as she watched her lips turn down into a frown. Caitlin shrugged and walked off, leaving Lexi alone with Karsh. Why would she do that? Why wouldn't she just take the little nuisance with her? So what? Do you use some sort of weird spell to make yourself look small and young, or is it just what you look like? Uh, it's just what I look like? He sounded unsure. Lexi raised an eyebrow. Lexi couldn't be bothered enough to further question him. She continued trying to make the situation less awkward. He was just standing there. He was a little ball of unsettling energy. So, like, why don't you... He cut her off. Are you expecting symptoms yet? It took Lexi a second to understand what his question was referring to. Honestly, it took her a second to register that he'd even cut her off. Uh, I only turned 17 today... So, no, I'm still mentally sound. She rolled her eyes, lightly pushing him away from her and baring sharp teeth at him. I'm not here to be your little experiment, kid, he whimpered. There was something in his eyes that Lexi hadn't expected, the betrayed look a dog would give an owner who just kicked it across the street. Sorry, he whispered. They stood there in silence for a moment, standing near each other in silence before following the wave of students walking into the school. Lexi, you're, uh, here. In her usual desk, there was a large assortment of books and school supplies. The teacher laughed, scratching the back of her head. She avoided eye contact. This is awkward. Most half-blood parents pull their students out of school after their 17th birthday because, well... <laughs> she laughed again, sucking in air through her teeth and running a hand through her hair. She set her eyes on Karsh. Oh, well, uh, you, who are you? She shifted her attention completely to Karsh, giving the black and blue-haired boy a smile. He gave her that huge, shit-eating grin. Lexi was starting to hate his stupid little face. Karsh Allens, ma'am. I'm new. Did the school board not tell you? Her eyes lit up. Oh, the warlock boy. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Lexi, you can sit next to Karsh then. Lexi had to hold back a groan, tossing her head back a little before following him to the seat the teacher had pointed out for the two of them. A few minutes went by before either of the two said anything. Do you hate me? I hate everyone, jackass. You don't hate Caitlin. I wish I did. You hate her friends. Yeah, because they're all blood purest pieces of shit. Is she? Silence. Lexi's voice got quiet. She looked at the ground. Yeah, Karsh. Why do you think that I said I wished I hated her? The rest of class went by with the two of them making small talk. Favorite colors, pets, anything to avoid awkward silence. Anything to avoid feeling like one was silently judging another. 
anything to avoid the heavy air between the two. He's infuriating, Lexi exclaimed, slamming her head against the lunch table. As it turned out, Karsh was in almost every single one of her classes. The only reason that she'd had a break from him now is because he was in the lunch line. Just her luck. He was even in her lunch. Aw, come on, Lex. I think he's kind of cute. Reminds me of Alex a little. He has that cute little spark. At the mention of her older brother, Lexi felt pain in her chest. Ow. She knew why Caitlin was comparing them, though. This wasn't the first time she compared a man to him. No, he doesn't. Alex and him are literally nowhere alike. I mean, kinda, you know? Only difference is, Karsh isn't a half... (sighs) At a glance from Lexi, she cut herself off. She knew better than to continue after a look like that. They're literally nothing alike. He doesn't even look like him, Caitlin, or act like him. She chuckled, brushing her hair behind her ear. You do this all the time, Kate. Every year. Every time you meet a guy. Shut up. I do not. She crossed her arms, staring Lexi down. Energy fluttered between the two of them, magic simmering under their surfaces. Lexi raised an eyebrow. Fight me right now, and I'll be the one who reminds you of Alex. She watched her friend's eyes drop. She watched her muscles relax. She felt the magical energy she'd felt disappear. Bitch, Caitlin muttered. Lexi had a feeling her best friend didn't actually like her all that much. She didn't like half-bloods. Lexi knew that. But she had a feeling this was something deeper. Something personal. She shook the thought out of her head. Caitlin was kidding. She didn't actually plan on fighting Lexi before she'd said that. Right? Hey guys, what's up? Karsh dropped his tray onto the table with a crash, sitting down in one of the chairs. Sat was probably a bad word for it. Perched. No. He was genuinely crouched in the chair with his feet on the seat, sitting on his heels. Uh, nothing much. Lexi side-eyed him a bit, thinking back to Caitlin's previous statement about him seeming like Alex. This really was an Alex thing. He caught her eye. Did you guys know that Alex Hex used to sit like this? Fascinating, isn't it? I think it has something to do with being half fairy. He was talking fast. What do you think, Lexi? There was a wild gleam in his eyes, almost deranged as he asked. His head was cocked to the side. Lexi wasn't sure that she liked his obsession with her, and now her brother. I think you're losing your shit, kid, he frowned, slouching a little in his seat, his legs sliding closer to the edge. I think you're boring to talk to. Tell me something. The ginger leaned forward, smiling at him. She rested her head on her fist, reaching towards him with her other hand, patting him on the head. No thanks. I think you're a weird little man. Besides, you know enough about my family, for whatever reason. Weirdo.